Hello. So this week I published a sex diary in the Metro newspaper in the UK. If you haven't seen it, uh, you can read it. I'll put a link below. The reaction has been mostly what I expected. A lot of that's awful. You're a terrible person. There's a word for women like you. How can you possibly be so promiscuous, etc., etc. But what's really interesting is the number of people who've replied to say it's not true. No, it can't be true. No, the idea, the very idea that you could date several people and have a nice time and travel around the world and meet up with other people that you date and have a nice time with them. Absolute fiction, apparently. Um, which is a fascinating, isn't it? Because there's definitely a sense of like, well, we want things to be different and we're obviously not happy with what's going on in our own lives. And therefore like, well, the idea that anything else is possible must be a fiction. And it's so relevant because what's going on in the UK and around the world right now is so many of us are asking for change. And change is so, so necessary in so many different areas. And yet it seems to be so easy to convince people that change is not realistic and not achievable and that somehow you're asking the impossible. So I want to take this opportunity to talk about how feasible change is, how realistic it really is. And one lovely starting point is the fact that I'm in Australia right now. And in Australia, I don't know if you know, the minimum wage is loads higher than it is in the UK. And there's an additional factor that's really interesting. They have this thing called the 25% casual loading, which means that if you're employing people on casual changeable hours, the minimum wage goes up by 25%, right? It's a brilliant idea. So you can still offer zero hour contracts or kind of gig economy type work if that's the way that you know your industry operates and the amount of hours you need is hugely variable you can still offer that but you have to pay an extra 25 percent on it to compensate people for the fact that their lives are disrupted by constantly changing hours and they're not able to plan ahead and often not really able to take on other work which would fill the gaps because they don't know what hours they've got coming up it's a great idea it means you can do it but only if your company really really needs it um, here are some other things that it means, for, by the way, that for casual labour in Australia, the, the effective minimum wage is around £15 an hour, which is something that so many workers in the UK would be so, so happy with and so delighted to be getting. Here's some other things, right? France and Germany have much higher pensions. Yeah, they don't particularly pay a ton more tax. They don't have massively different societies. They have much higher pensions than we do in the UK. They're slightly different structures, so I won't try and go through the numbers. You can look it up and try and see what you would get given your set of circumstances. In the UK, the pensionable age is 66, and that's going up to 67 and then to 68. In France, they're trying to move it from 62 to 64. And there are, I think it would be fair to say, basically riots. Like, the protests are all over the streets. It seems extremely likely that they won't get away with it. In Finland, childcare is guaranteed by the government for every child up to the age of seven. And there are loads of other countries that provide childcare to young children up to three, up to four, up till they start school. For example, Belgium, for example, Denmark. This is absolutely, completely feasible. If other countries can do this, there's no reason why we can't. Another beautiful example from here in Australia is, do you know what the starting salary for a teacher is here in Australia? It's about £42,000. In the UK, £28,000. And yet there is this backlash. The teachers are on strike. Oh, their demands are unrealistic. Well, they're so unrealistic that you think that we couldn't pay teachers as well as they do in Australia. I mean, if that's your idea of unrealistic, you really, really lack imagination, right? We have to be able to find a way to do these things. And the same applies to all those countries around the world who are doing better on their green initiatives on us, doing better in all kinds of other ways than us. And perhaps if we start thinking outside the box in this liberated way, not only will we listen to people asking for really great changes that would really help people, but we might also liberate ourselves a little bit and think outside of the box in terms of what would make us happy in terms of our lives. And if you've read my sex diary and decided that's for you, well, guess what? Maybe it's for you. Thank you so much. I will see you next week. And a special thanks to those people who sponsor these videos and make them possible if you possibly can stretch your budget to be one of them. 
uh, have a look in the uh, comments section and you'll see how to do that and we will massively appreciate it.